first little wire component I'm going to make I call a parallel loop because the loop sits parallel with the button face. So, take a piece of wire, get a round nose pliers, put it right in the center, fold it over, maybe squeeze it a little bit if it's crooked, and go down about maybe three eighths of an inch or so, and then fold it up. And then go down about halfway, fold it out on both sides. And if it's a little crooked here and there, you can straighten it out. Squeeze these points down. And you can make an arc with around those pliers just by going all the way around, but I like to use a socket. And the tension you're going to get in the wire is going to vary from you know whatever type of wire you use. I recommend using a very springy wire. Ah, let's see. So you want to get it started and then kind of angle it out a little bit. And you want it to not be the full circle because you want it to act like a spring within the button. And this one isn't as good as the other one I made, but that's basically what you get. And to put a parallel loop in the button, you squeeze the two ends, press the loop down, and then you turn it over because these are hard to slide once they're put in because they've got two ends. So it kind of locks in. You slide it where you want it. Press in one end. Press in the other end. And there you go. And the next one I call a perpendicular loop. And you want to start this one on the end, make a little loop until it touches the wire, like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you want to go down a little ways with your round nose pliers and pull it back up. And then fold it out. And it can go in either direction. And then you make your arc. And if it's a little crooked, you just go like this. Straighten it out a bit. And to put a perpendicular loop in, you just start with this end, kind of curl it around like that. And if it's crooked, you can, you know, fix it with your fingers or you can use a pliers. And because these only have one end pushing into the inside of the collet, you can slide it where you want it. Just like that. And the last one is an ear wire. So I use a file to file a tip because that's going to be this part of the ear wire. I don't want people to get their ears all cut up. Just kind of go all the way around. Until it's nice and smooth. pretty good. And if you have a polishing cloth, you can just put it on the table and kind of go and it'll smooth it out a lot more. And once that's done, you 
You make your little, bend your little tip. And then you need something round, small and round like a pen to make the loop. Basically just bend it around. Bring it back up. So it looks like an ear wire. And then fold this up. And bend it, bend it either left or right. And make your arc. And again, you want a really springy wire. This wire doesn't seem to be as springy as the stuff I used last time. So I'll probably go back to the other stuff. This is surgical stainless steel, which is good for an ear wire. You could also use niobium. 20 gauge niobium would work really well, but that's a little bit more of an expensive wire. But it actually turned out pretty good. So that's how to make an ear wire. Ear wires are very similar to the perpendicular loop. Just pop it in there. If it's straightened, you need to straighten it out a little bit. And then line it up where you want it. Looks pretty good. And you've got a pair of earrings. If you want more than one um, loop on your button, you can use two, or you can figure out approximately where it's going to be um, to, add, to add a second or third loop. If you're adding more than one insert, I wouldn't recommend going more than three because it gets pretty clumped up in there. But I'll show you what you can do to make like necklaces and stuff. You want to start this inside the loop and then go over the collet press down and then rotate it where you need it and then go clip clip like that now for this we're going to make a earring a pair of earrings using all three parts and I'm going to start with the the bottom part or the bottom button with the perpendicular loop, get it where I want it, and then make sure it's going in the right direction. So this part is where the button is, so that means this part's going to go down. Add that into the loop. And then attach that. Now, because the <clears throat> ear wire and the, and the perpendicular loop are so long, I mean, you could always cut it. They don't necessarily have to be that long. You could cut it down there if you want to. Um, you got to run it through so that it goes past the center. So, like, when you press this down, the ear wire will be sitting right about here. Because you can turn it this way, but you can't turn it that way. So, it's a lot easier to align it if it goes past the center. See, now I can just find out where the top is. Like that, straighten it out a bit, it's obviously a little crooked. There, just like that. Now we're gonna make a bracelet using multiple inserts. These are just some sci-fi designs that I got from this packaging made out of cardstock. And you want to get a clasp that's the loop and the hook are on the same plane, or you know, so they're not perpendicular to each other. And then you want to put the clasp on before you put the in insert into the button. And then place it where you want it. pretty good. 
And I use sealed jump rings because it makes it a lot more sturdy. So you want to put those on first. If you're not using sealed jump rings, you don't have to worry about putting them on first. And then just continue on. Then you add your, your next loop. Reinsert like that. And we'll pause it here and finish it up. All right. Now you like add the last one. You don't need to add any rings to it because that's going to be what the clasp connects to. And that's what it looks like. And for this, you're going to need some cardstock. I came up with this just because I wanted to make buttons out of playing cards, and the playing cards were way too thick to make a button out of. So I thought, okay, what can I do? And I got this 7 8 inch hole punch, which you can just run wherever you want to put it. Pop it out. Put it right in the center of your button shell. Add some mylar. And these get kind of staticky. It doesn't you don't usually have a very big problem with that with the cardstock because it weighs more than paper. But um so I just drop it right on the top. a button. This one's a little crooked. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Just a sec. If it does come out crooked, a good way to pop it out and start over is to take a flat nose plier, grab the collet, and then twist a little bit. It pops right out. And then you can take off the mylar. I'm actually glad I got a chance to show this because sometimes you'll only have one of the design and then if you mess it up, you know, and then start over. Hopefully get it right this time, or at least good enough. Nice and smooth. Much better. Cool. And one other thing that I did with this technique is I was getting kind of crazy with it and coming up with all kinds of things that I could do. And one of the things I realized was I have an eighth inch hole punch and a quarter inch hole punch. So I had this really cool paper. I had a black one and a green one. Unfortunately, the, the black one that I made this necklace out of that I'm going to show in a minute doesn't look as cool as the green. So I'm going to make another one in green. But I basically designed this. It's a 7 8 inch circle with quarter inch circles around it and then 8 inch circles in that. And then I punched them all out. Just pop. Pop all the way around. And then I took my 7 inch punch when it was all punched, when I had all the 8 and quarter inch holes punched. Popped it out. Made it into a button several times. And then I put them all into a necklace. And unfortunately, you can't see the metallic sheen as much underneath the mylar with this black. But I think the green will look a little bit cooler because it'll shine more. But I like it. I think it came out really good. I also did these, which had these little perforated cardstock things. I, I drew this in Sharpie. And then I punched a crooked or off-center hole with my 7/8 inch punch, and then I punched the actual cardstock, and then I colored the places or the the space underneath the dots with a pink sharpie, and then put it on there, and made a pair of earrings. 
So there's any number of things you can do. Now I want to show how to make a button out of holographic sign vinyl, which I just love. There's different kinds. My favorite is called Crystal. And I'll put a link in the info area on where to get it. So it's a sticker, which means you can't just stick it to the button shell because it'll get all squinched up in there. And originally when I did it, I stuck it on just a plain piece of white paper, but it's still bunched up a little bit. So I came up with this idea. You use some wax paper and then affix your sign vinyl to it. Make sure you don't get any air bubbles. And what this does is because it's a wax paper, it kind of the, the sticker will kind of slide a little bit when it gets pushed down by the uh, button maker rather than bunch up and pop out of the mylar. And unfortunately this stuff is very, this vinyl is very tough. So you can't really use a standard punch. I used to use this to punch holes for, or designs for my buttons, which works just fine. It's a little bit smaller than the actual size you need, but it's only like a sixteenth of an inch. But I was making so many buttons, I bought an actual punch. And this works great. That punch, the craft punch, won't work at all. It'll get all squinched up in there and won't even cut through. But this thing works like a charm. You just pop it. And if you don't have one of those or you don't want to get one, what you can do is take a piece of cardstock and trace it with a Sharpie or other permanent marker. And then trim it out. And when I first started making these, I didn't think I would need mylar because it's a, it's a sign vinyl. It's made for like outdoor use, so it's really it's, it's plastic. But what would happen is it would pop out the side. It would rip along the edge of the button shell. So I just use the mylar. And you go nice and slow because it's going to be kind of a thick button. And if you go fast, you might pop it through the edge of the mylar. So just a nice smooth stroke. And what you get is a very cool button. And one of the things I want to make out of this, this is just kind of a side project that I'll probably won't finish for you know 10 years or so. Whenever I'm doing buttons, I make a few of these. And I just started doing this. I've got maybe a dozen more, but I want to make one of those things that dangles in a doorway. You know, where they got, normally they're made out of beads and they're just dangling there. But I want to make one out of buttons. And one side's going to be like a pattern, a zigzag pattern, where it goes blue, 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 and you know, yellow, 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 and it kind of goes maybe six or eight of them or something like that. And then the other side will just be all holographic sign vinyl. And this is a, there, there's two parallel loops you know, running across. And then I put a jump ring on the top to kind of keep it from flopping around. And then I added two more jump rings to connect them. So it is, you know, labor intensive and it takes a while, but eventually maybe I'll get it done. Okay. Because I'm basically just showing how to make the wire forms, I also wanted to show the different types of jewelry you could make using these inserts. So I just made a whole bunch of different types of jewelry. And these were all made from a deck of playing cards. Two decks, I think, actually. And the most versatile uh, insert you can make is the parallel loop. And that, that's what I use most often. But some of the other ones, like the perpendicular loop, can be used for things like this and the ear wire, of course. Yeah, but most of these, all of these are made with the parallel loop. 
these have three in there and they're just connected together and then connected to some chain mail and this uses all three these have two parallel loops in each button and then they're connected through a uh, strip of chain mail with a jump ring and this is made with a uh, sterling silver and aurora borealis crystals and some holographic sign vinyl again there's a parallel loop they're all parallel loop these are parallel loops these are perpendicular loops which I kind of sandwich between some pins which are wrapped with wire and this is the same technique there's elastic cord that just goes through the difference is the elastic cord on this one goes all the way around the uh, wrist and on this one it kind of zigzags back and forth between some really small black straws that I cut up underneath here is also parallel loops and parallel loops parallel loops and this as well um, again more parallel loops let's see what else I have that's different here these are two perpendicular loops that are on either side of a bead and parallel loops and this is kind of odd I basically took some clear straws I squished them and then I put a piece of zigzag wire in the middle and I secured the ends by punching a hole and putting an eyelet in there and then I in the center there's a black straw and then I connected them with chain mail and then added the buttons and the buttons are made out of really thin metallic origami paper and then just a plain black paper I cut these out by hand and then laid them on top of a circle a 7 8 inch circle and then underneath that was a um, full circle of met uh, gold metallic origami paper and these are the perpendicular loops uh, these buttons are made with handmade paper and these are some old cards that I found and they had some punches in them I think they're old gas um, bills or something like that my mom had a whole stack of them she saved them because she thought they were cool and I basically drew patterns on them with Sharpie and then punched them out and I colored around the edge in green Sharpie and then just made a button out of it a uh, whole bunch of stuff here I think all of these are the parallel loops yeah except this one which is a perpendicular loop this has a jump ring attached to a button uh, a sewing button and then that jump ring attaches to two parallel loops which connect the buttons and this is just woven through the parallel loop uh, something I, most of these just I just drew this is a vintage set of buttons I found that kind of cracked me up and this is these are also parallel loops that you can see the shape of the spike here the button will sit kind of in that little groove and then the parallel loop which has to be made a little bigger to go around the screw of the spike will sit between the spike and the leather core or leather band and this I just I punched uh, with a quarter inch punch and then I cut this out with an exacto knife to make a keyhole and then punched the whole thing out with a 7 8 inch punch and made a button um oh, let's see this is just a vintage set of buttons I found on eBay and I made these this chain with silver and some black stone and white glass these are also a vintage set these uh, 1984 buttons and I made this out of a CD cake box I cut out the plastic piece and then I punched a bunch of holes in it, added some accents and attached it with a jump ring going through a hole and through the parallel loops which holds the buttons on and it's, it's uh, secured on the wrist with uh, velcro I wanted it to have, have kind of an industrial vibe and this is just some plastic tubing that I found when I was walking on the street one day and I put some ball chain in the center of it and made a necklace this is a engine illustration I found in an old book and I thought it looked like a little face a vintage button with some rolled envelope beads and spikes again and this is a, a laptop I, I took apart and I had this huge um, circuit board thought was pretty cool so I took a picture of it made some buttons and I had these vintage brass connector beads and I thought they matched pretty well so I made them into a set of jewelry so there's quite a few different things you can do and I hope you enjoy making stuff because I sure did
Very cool.